picture it. It's an oddly warm early November day, and a person is laying outside on a hammock and reading uh, This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson. The person comes across a section on being non-binary and uh, has a revelation, one of many, revelation upon revelation upon revelation over a, a several week period. The person runs outside, uh, runs inside rather, to tell their husband about their revelation. I think I might identify as non-binary, the person says, and my name is now Jay Moore, and I identify as they, them, theirs. And the husband just kind of laughs it, laughs it off and, you know, takes it in stride because, again, revelation after revelation after revelation. <laughs> and, you know, at some point you just have to be like, all right, that person was me. And uh, the revelation was, again, that I realized I'm non-binary. Um, the reading, This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson. And I, I'm going to start by saying that this book can and will save lives. It will save young people from years of, of trauma um, and questioning themselves and possibly uh, internalized homophobia. It'll save parents from um, wondering what if, what, what's going to happen if my child is gay. Um, it's just, this, this book is very important. And, you know, in, in the intro, um, Juno Dawson says that she revised this book. It came out originally in 2014. Revised this book, uh, looks like last year, to, um, you know, update some of the terminology and make it more inclusive. And, uh, you know, I think she did a great job. There are elements that um, are outdated, um, even by today's standards. But um, the fluid nature of um, gender identity and expression and sexuality, um, you know, makes it so that it, it's impossible to keep it completely updated with the, termino updated with the terminology. And I, I think that's one of the complaints that some people had about this book. Um, and... I would argue that, you know, Juno did a great job updating this. And again, it's impossible to just keep everything updated. Um, you know, growing up, I grew up in a homophobic household. And my parents, they're going to be homophobic no matter what. It is like, it, it's just ingrained in who they are. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, give them time. They will change. I, I gave them many, many years to change. It's been 17 years, almost 18 years since uh, Rich and I got together. And they've made no changes. You know, I, I thought there have been times over the years where I thought, okay, well, maybe they're making some progress. And then they'd say something that would completely shatter that hope. And, it, you know, at some point, I just had to realize they are not going to change. And I should not need to change. And, and so I had to cut them out of my life. Um, but for a lot of parents who are open-minded and who unconditionally love their children, not just say that they unconditionally love them, but actually unconditionally love them, this book is basically a guidebook to everything they need to know about um, their children and their sexuality and their identity and how to respond to that and how to um, foster a loving relationship, how to nurture that relationship and um, accept your children for who you really are. And, and for, um, you know, teenagers or young adults who are questioning themselves, they haven't quite figured things out yet. You know, I thought I had things figured out and then I realized I'm non-binary. Um, even if this book doesn't result in the child being ready to come out of the closet. Uh, you know, maybe they're not in a family situation that, um, you know, is, is going to, to lead to good results with that. You know, they're maybe the worry of being kicked out or uh, of years of passive aggressivity from parents or being sent to conversion therapy. 
even if this book doesn't lead to um, the person being comfortable coming out, it will help them better understand themselves and um, be prepared so that when they are ready to come out or when they find a safe haven to be able to do so, they can do so. And they'll know the they'll have resources on, on how to be able to do so, or um, it helps to give people the, uh, the resources that they need to be safe, um, whether it's knowing about safe sex, um, knowing about um, resources available to them, you know, like LGBTQ community centers or places that they can go if they do ultimately come out and get kicked out. And I, I do have a little bit of an issue with the fact that Juno, um, you know, says that it's only in the most extreme of situations that people are kicked out or unaccepted. Um, because I think situations like mine are actually fairly common, especially here in America. But that's neither here nor there, because, again, the book does a great job, I think, accounting for um, all possible scenarios. That main point, and you know, it's funny, um, not funny, it's, it's depressing, but the book talks a little bit about, um, um, you know, this being a resource in, in libraries and schools, and this absolutely should be in every library, um, public library, school library across the country, because it will help save people. But you've got your Karens and your Chads, who are going to libraries now and uh, throwing a hissy fit because they don't want people to be indoctrinated about being gay. Well, guess what? Um, this book isn't going anywhere, and you're the one, if you're a Karen or a Chad, who needs to change. Uh, so the main point is, this book should be required reading in every school, and uh, uh, I think that Juno Dawson has done a great job putting together a resource, a guidebook for all things LGBTQ+. Um, so just to end this video, I'm going to uh, read um, or uh, turn to a few pages that I found to be interesting here um, or quotable. Starting with, um, Juno says on page five, we have to be able to talk about sexuality and identity in a non-hysterical way. And I think that's extremely important extremely important because, um, you know, the conversations can be subjective or, or politically charged, religiously charged. Take away all the subjectivity because we need to be able to talk about matters of gender identity and expression and sexuality in a calm and rational way. Uh, page 37 was... Um, the description of being non-binary and what that entails. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, that's page 37. Page 51. Uh, found this diagram interesting. Things that did not make you gay. I thought this was interesting because my mom um, bought into a lot of the, um, the stereotypes. And there's often, you know, a kernel of truth in stereotypes, as, as the book talks about. But... Uh, Things that did not make me gay. Musical theater. You know what? I am theatrical. Um, musical theater or theater or any form of music or entertainment did not make me gay. An airborne monkey virus did not make me gay. Dolls did not make me gay. My mom, uh, you know, would tell me, and I think I mentioned this in the previous video, that, uh, you know, she always felt bad that she didn't um, have me do more more traditionally masculine activities growing up because uh, maybe I wouldn't have been gay. And, um, you know, she always talked about, she, she was all about the toxic masculinity. Um, and yet she would give me dolls growing up. Uh, Peter Pan dolls, Wizard of Oz dolls. I lost Dorothy's Ruby Slipper. Oh, no. Uh, she got angry at me for that, L had me listen to Barbara Streisand and, and musicals and Broadway and, and yeah, talked about, um, you know, being gay, being a bad thing, um, and that I needed to be more masculine. Fluoride. <laughs> you know, my mom bought into a lot of witch doctor remedies. Fluoride um, 
she felt was a poison and the only thing fluoride toothpaste was good for was for killing ants. <laughs> she was just something else. Pushy mothers. Pushy mothers do not make you gay. The Illuminati, my mom, was, uh, <laughs> she believed in the, that the New World Order, as it were, was evil and, and the Illuminati. Satan, seeing gay characters in books or films, sharing mugs with gay people. None of those things make you gay. All right. Um, book talks a bit about stereotypes, as I mentioned. Um, harmful stereotypes, and some of them that are true, but aren't bad. Um, but like, uh, gay men are pedophiles. My mom would buy into that bullcrap, and I guess my dad to an extent as well. Things like that, that are harmful, that need to be done away with. Camp. Uh, page 66 and uh, 67. Um, the word camp is often applied to gay men, although anything could be camp. Uh, I have always seen myself as being more camp. Um, I guess that is me being more in touch with my feminine side. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with camp. Page 85. Uh, I felt like this was an impactful quote. LGBTQ plus people are strong because we have to be. I think that's very impactful. You know, we have to go through so much trauma um, on our, many of us, on our journey to self-acceptance. And through that, you build up a tough skin. But don't let that um, take away your ability to be in touch with your emotions. I, I lost touch with that for many, many years. Very important. It's good to be strong, but also um, make sure you're able to be... Um, able to be open and uh, um, express your emotions to other people. Page 95 I thought was interesting. The law is on your side again. By law, a school has to tackle all forms of bullying and provide a safe space. Schools must also take positive steps to make young LGBTQ plus people feel included. It's not enough for schools to merely tolerate us. Uh, I'm looking at you right now. Florida, do better, be better. Page 103. Even a book like this would have been unthinkable 10 years ago. It's Crave, a book about you in a school library. What next? Well, we see now what's next, and it's dangerous. And I'm looking at you, Karens and Chads. This book will save lives, and all you are doing by trying to get books like this pulled off the shelves, is taking away resources that are going to make young people feel comfortable in their own bodies. Stop what you are doing and think about it. Stop. Page 140 talks about when um, coming out to your parents goes wrong. You know, you can be disowned, shamed, tossed out on the street. Uh, those are the worst case scenarios. For me, the worst case scenario I always thought was going to be tossed out. The worst case scenario was not that. It was uh, basically having my parents tell me that I am living in sin and that I am called to, uh, to live a life of, of chastity and, uh, and that um, you know being gay is bad in God's eyes. And I, in, in my case, I think it would, be, would have been better had I been kicked out on the spot. I mean, I was 21 when I came out to my mom the second time. So if I was kicked out the second time, I would have found a way to manage, right? It would have allowed me to cut those ties immediately and not have to go through years and years of masking and hiding myself and who I was. And then lastly, on uh, page 291 is uh, an interview with um, an anonymous person who says, um, it, it, it's advice on, on coming out to your parents or rather advice on if you're a parent, how to handle your child coming out to you. Educate yourself from reputable sources, reputable. Be cool about it, even if you're slightly freaking out inside and ask your child what they would like you to say to others. Don't, do not dictate to that child, oh, don't ever tell anybody you're gay because, you know, what will, what, what will the relatives think or blah, 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 you know. Ask your child what they would like you to say to others, how they would like to be represented in the larger world by you. 
and then stick to that. It builds trust with your child and, and, and enables them to be comfortable in their life and progress at their own pace. Allow them to control their own narrative. I'm going to actually read part of, of one more. Um, and this is a quote from somebody named Elizabeth. They are still your child, just reimagined, forcing them back into the closet, which I did at one point, because you are uncomfortable. It, I, I forced myself back into the closet, rather, is a really shitty thing to do. Pretending they are still straight is a crappy thing to do. Making them go to a pray away the gay camp is not only very shitty, but a mentally and emotionally scarring experience. The world does not owe you a straight child. You produced, not reproduced. Is your tantrum over not getting your way worth the relationship with your child? So I leave you on that note. Uh, if you are a parent and watching this, be very careful how you approach uh, addressing your child's identity and sexuality because it can have permanent ramifications. Um, so this book is gay. Juno Dawson. Pick it up and read it. I don't care if um, you are already comfortable with who you are. I don't care if you are um, just learning about yourself. I don't care if you are a parent who just wants to learn more so that you can be better able um, to help your child should they come up to you. This book is for you. It doesn't matter who you are. This book is for you. Read it.